Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use pan law in Reaper. Now, if you search around on the internet trying to figure out what pan law is, it can be kind of confusing. There's a lot of misinformation out there or information that's not explained correctly. So I'm going to try to make that a little bit clearer, at least as it pertains to Reaper. Now, to understand how pan law works, it's important to know where you adjust it in Reaper, and that's in the project settings. Let's go up here, project settings, and if we go to advanced, here's where we set the pan law for our project. Now this is important. It's in the project settings and not in our preferences because it's based on project. You could change it from project to project, but it's not going to change in a system. If there was a preference to change the pan law, it'll mess up any mixes that you already made. If you open up a session that was made from a different system using a different pan law, it's not going to sound the same. So that's not a good thing. It's better to have it in the project settings so it's saved when you save the project. And if you find a setting that you prefer, you could always save it as your default. So every new project that you create uses the same pan law. But as you'll see, for the most part, you don't usually have to change it. In fact, for most of us, the default is perfect. So by default, Reaper sets it to zero which means there's no compensation for pan law. So let me show you what that means. If we go down to our mixer, I have a track here that I put a tone generator on and I set it to minus six. See it's right here, minus six, and it comes back to the master as minus six. So the reason for pan law is if we pan it to the left, let's just reset this, it's still minus six. If we pan it to the right, it's also minus six. But when you pan it in the middle, with it being minus six on both speakers, it's gonna be twice as loud. So that can sound a bit weird when the sound is panning from left to right. When it gets to the center, it gets a bit louder. Now most systems aren't perfect. A perfect system would make it 60 be louder. But I think the best systems in the world are lucky to get above five. A mixing room might be three or four. So companies disagree on how much to compensate for. And right now, Reap is not compensating at all. That's why the level in the center is the same as the sides, but it's gonna sound louder to our ears. So let's check out what happens when we compensate for it. Let's set this instead to minus 2.5. Now this is the default that Pro Tools used to use before Pro Tools 9, and you couldn't change it. So if you're used to that way, you might wanna set it to 2.5. And what that's going to do, if we hit OK, let's reset the meter. Now it's at minus 8.5. So it reduced it by 2.5. If you pan it to the left, it's still minus 6. Pan it to the right, it's also minus 6. But when it goes to the center, it changes to minus 8.5. It reduces it by 2.5 dB to compensate for it getting louder in the middle. And again, if you're used to that, you might want to use that setting. Another common setting is 3.0, right here. This is the default that Pro Tools uses now, after Pro Tools 9, but now in Pro Tools, you can change it. It's also what older analog consoles used to use, like Neve and API. They chose 3dB. So with it set like this, if we pan to the left, it's still 6 dB, or the right. But if we pan in the middle, it's minus 9 dB. So it reduces the center by 3 dB. And it does it proportionally. It doesn't just jump when it's in the center. So when you're over here, it's 6, and as you slowly get over, it slowly gets reduced until it goes to minus 3. So it's not a jump, it does it in proportion. Another common setting is minus 4.5. This is the default of SSL consoles. I think the thought behind this is that with an SSL console, you probably have a pretty good sounding room. So the center would be even louder. So you want to reduce it even more to compensate. And at 4.5, again left, is still minus six, and right, but in the center, it's down four and a half dB. And there's one more setting, if you happen to have a perfect system, 
and that's minus six. I'm assuming Reaper put it in just to cover all their bases. They want to give you every option. Now there's another option over here that works with each one of these, and that's gain compensation, which boosts the pans instead of the other way around. So if we put this back to zero, this isn't going to do anything because no compensation is occurring. But if we set this to minus three and choose this instead, instead of it reducing the middle, it boosts the sides. So it's basically doing the same thing, just the opposite way. So it's set to minus three and gain compensation turned on. Now if we put it to the sides, instead of it being minus six, it's minus three. So it boosts the sides instead of reducing the center. We go to the right, same thing. It's minus three, even though the signal is actually minus six. If we bring it to the center, it goes back to minus six. So by using this option over here, gain compensation, the center stays the same and the sides change. They'll boost by whatever we set up over here. So if we use six, anything pan left and right is going to be zero because it's boosting the sides by six dB. But in the center, it's still minus six. So the compensation is the same, it just does it a different way. Now you're probably wondering, what's the benefit of this? Does it change how I mix? Really, that's a personal preference. If you used it one way, like on old consoles, you might want to set it to minus three. Or Pro Tools, the way it used to be, you might want to set it here. Or if you don't really care, just leave it at zero. Because in the end, it's not going to affect how you mix. You're going to compensate for volume as you're mixing anyway. So if you pan something in the center and it sounds louder, you're just going to bring it down. Or if you pan something to the side and it gets lower, you're just going to bring it up. So you're going to compensate along the way no matter what. So no matter how you set this, your result should still be the same. So it's really just a personal preference. Except, there are times when it does matter. And that's when you're panning something automatically from left to right. In those situations, you might hear it disappear when it gets to the center, or you might hear it getting louder when it gets to the center. In those situations, pan load does matter. But luckily, Reaper has a solution. Instead of changing it globally on your project, you could change it by track. So let's go to a drum loop and check that out. I have a drum loop set up here so you can hear what happens when we pan it. I put a plugin on there that's going to automatically pan it. Let's hear what that sounds like. Notice how it moves from left to right. The level kind of changes depending on when you're hearing it in headphones, on your monitor speakers, in a big room, in a concert hall. What happens in the middle can be adjusted on a track-by-track -track basis. So let's go back to our project settings and leave this on the default, which is zero compensation. So the sound should be louder when it gets in the middle, as opposed to the sides. So let's hear that again. It may not be noticeable on your system, but in certain systems, it's going to get louder in the middle compared to the sides. But we could adjust that just on this track. So if we right click our pan, this pops up. And we could choose to override the pan law just on this track. So right now it's zero. We could check this box and change it right here. So if we change it to minus six, when the sound gets in the middle, it's going to be reduced by 6 dB. Let's see if you can hear that. It should be a lot closer to what you're hearing on the sides. But again, you can adjust it for your personal taste, also depending on the sound that you're using. So where a loop might sound good at minus 6, a string sound or a hi-hat might sound better at minus three, and we could adjust that. Let's hear it at minus three. Now it should be slightly louder in the middle, 
But again, it's going to depend on your system and your personal choice for that sound. Now, you could also choose to use gain compensation on the pans. Again, it's going to do the same thing, except instead of the middle getting lower, the sides get louder. So if we make it minus 6, the sides are going to be 6 dB louder. But again, this is based on our track, which is different from our project setting. So you can leave this at Reaper's default of zero and change it on a track by track basis. Let's take a look at the meter to see if you can see what's happening. Let's leave it here. Let's switch it here again. Turn this off. And let's put this back to zero. Now let's watch the meter down here. Notice the sides and the middle is about the same level as far as the meter. Now let's adjust it. Let's set it to minus six. And now let's watch the meter. You should see the middle getting a little bit lower compared to the sides. And you should also hear the difference. But again, that's on a track by track basis. Over here is how you set it up by default. And there's really no perfect way to set this. It's really a personal preference. And like I said earlier, it shouldn't change how you mix or the results you get. But the one thing you don't want to do is change it after the fact. If your song's already mixed or even partially mixed, adjusting this is going to change how the mix sounds. The things that are panned to the left or the right are going to change in level compared to the things panned in the center. And you don't want that. But because Reaper is so customizable, it gives us all these options. So that's the pan law in Reaper. I hope you understand this a little better, and I thank you for your time. Thanks.